Hello friends and welcome to Woofboxing, the channel all about the Woofbox. I will be making a video like this for all sequencer pages, so if you don't want to miss the next one, consider hitting the subscribe button. Today we're going to talk about the global page. Okay. <laughs> I don't know why, sometimes the Woofbox just starts by itself. I think it's just very excited it wants to get going. Today we're going to talk about the global page. So how do you get to the global page? It's very simple. When you're in the sequencer, you just turn the encoder to the right, you just hit the pattern page, and the next one is the global page. So a quick refresher, each key that is lit is a parameter, and to change it, you just hold it down and turn the encoder. Easy breezy. The first one on the global page is master volume. This is actually the master volume of the track, not the whole not the whole woof box. If you want to change that volume, you hold play and turn the encoder. But the track volume. So right now we're on the bass track and I can change the volume, turn it up or down. I think about here is pretty good. Cool. The next one is the transposition settings. So as you can see right now, I'm, pretty, I'm playing pretty low notes, but I can go up here and I can go to 24, and then 12. Anyway, let's go back to 36. All right, the next one is the algorithm selection. The Woofbox can do all kinds of synthesis types, but we're not gonna go through all of those in this video. For now, I'll just put them on the screen so you can pause the video and see what is available. The next one is follow chord. This is awesome because it allows the Woofbox to kind of guide your notes according to a certain set of rules. Right now, the rule is root. So it's gonna go into the chord track, it's gonna look at the notes you have, and then it's going to quantize those according to those chords. So right now, it's gonna quantize them to the root. That's why you don't hear a lot of variation right now. But you have other options. You have off, so you can play all the notes, you have LGL, which is the key slash scale that is set in the song menu. And by the way, if you wanna just see where that is, you go in here and it's one of these. Yeah, there you go. So you have the root and the scale. Then you have transpose one, transpose two, and transpose three. And the first one is it transposes to the root, the second one is the second one, and the third is the third note and I believe transposed all is just, it will quantize to any of the notes in the chord, but the one that is the closest in pitch. CLS3 and CLSA are very good for arpeggios. And then you have root, which we've already seen. Root's good for basses, I usually leave mine on root. Moving on to spectral quality. This feature can automatically reduce the resolution of a track to save on DSP resources. Most of the time it won't be noticeable, but I guess it depends on what you're playing. If you're playing something that's very low, like a bass line or a bass drum, then you might notice some aliasing. You can actually use this uh, creatively too, to push it, and I'll show you how in a second. So auto means that if the Woofbox is using at least 70% of its resources, then it will start lowering the resolution of the track. Then we have full. This will force this track to have the full resolution at all times. Then 50% and then 25%. So if I play at full, let me solo. And then we're gonna go to 50. So you can kind of tell. You can actually use this. It almost sounds like grittier. You know what, I'm actually gonna leave it because I feel like it cuts through the mix better, at least in this case. This can be very interesting either creatively or if you have a lot going on on the track and you want to push the envelope. The next one is the sound category. So this determines what presets get loaded into the patch page. So for example, right now it says bass, so it's gonna load all bass presets, but if I change this to lead and I go, this is gonna totally mess up this track, but let's just do it. I'm gonna pick this. It is now loading a lead. The next one is track behavior. This will define how a track should behave in terms of playback, 
UI functionality, stem rendering, file management, and more. I usually leave it on uh, whatever sound category I'm currently using in my sound, unless I'm doing samples, in which case I will send it to a sample if it's chromatic or a sample kit if I'm trying to do a kit. The next one is how you set the MIDI channel if you're using external gear using a TRS type A adapter. And all you gotta do is just set the MIDI channel and boom, you're good to go. I would recommend lowering the track volume though so you don't hear both the note from the whatever you're sequencing and the move box note as well. The next one is swing. So right now I have some hi-hats and I can turn on some swing. I do love that it's per track. All right, the next one is bit crushing. The cool thing about this is it's after the oscillators, but before the filter, the effects, and the dynamics. So you can bit crush something and then still kind of filter it. Here's my bass line. Let's solo it. Watch your ears. There you go. All right. The next one is saturation, so let's hear that. This is with saturation off. And this is with saturation on. The next one is distortion. Be very careful with this. This can destroy your ears. Even jazz does a pretty large volume jump. <laughs> this, is, this is insane. If you turn to the right, you'll get regular clipping distortion, and if you clip to the left, it'll be foldback distortion. <laughs> and you know, you can, you can do this and then lower the volume so you're good to go. I feel like my poor chord track is so low you can't even hear it. <laughs> okay. And next we have the effect sends. So we have reverb, chorus, delay one, and delay two. So I'll just add a little bit of chorus so it already has some. Very nice. Love how like thick and stereo that, that is. Let's uh, let me go to the chord track for this. This has a lot of reverb on it already. Let's turn that off. Some delay. This is delay two. You can have both delays. Chorus. And <laughs> That's a little much. That is how you use the effect sense. Uh, the only thing I haven't talked about is that on the chords track, the global menu is a little bit different. It's gonna have a bass transpose option. So right now, the lowest note's gonna be two octave below the chord where the chord is. Now it's gonna be the root note of the chord. Root note's lower. Root note's lower. And now it's too low. So that's pretty cool. And the other one that is extremely awesome, it is the strum one. I love this one. Okay, I'm just gonna copy this. What was this? Okay, so now I have all these notes, right? Let me go back to the global page and we're gonna turn on strum. Yeah, oh, I love this so much. I absolutely love this feature. I think it's one of my favorite. I keep saying every feature is my favorite, but that's because there's a lot of favorite features on this thing. There's one more thing, the context menu. Let's just pretend that we were at 127 and we couldn't go any higher, but we couldn't hear it. You can actually bring all the other tracks down. All you gotta do is hold right, click the encoder to enter the context menu, and then you have two options, raise volume by eight 
and raise volume by one. And what it's going to do is it's actually going to lower all the tracks by either one unit or eight, except the one you're on. So if like right now I'm on the bass track, if I do this, See, it's lowering every track except for my bass track. This is very useful if you've done like some kind of crazy synthesis patch and you just don't have enough volume. If you have found value in this video, please consider leaving a like. And if you have any questions or you would like to see something in a future video, let me know in the comments below. Anyway, thank you so much for being here and ciao, ciao.